Hello, my friends, and once again, welcome to the Parish of St. Anne's here in Toronto. My name is Don Byers, and I serve as a priest and pastor of this parish. Well, my friends, we have been having some marvelous weather. It feels less like October and more like late August, early September. But you know what? I'm not going to complain about it because I'm not looking forward to any snow. So it can stay warm like this for a long time. My friends, it's so good to be able to welcome you again to the Church of St. Anne's, to be able to pray and worship with you, and I hope you find this time meaningful. My friends, in addition to our online worship video, I invite you to join us for worship at 9 o'clock on Sundays on Zoom as we read the scriptures and we talk about them a little bit, share our thoughts and ideas, and to also join us at 10.30 for our celebration of Holy Eucharist. You can join us here in person or online as well. Details for that may be found on our website at www.saintn.ca. I hope I said that right. My friends, this weekend is an exciting weekend because we get to invite our dear friend and former pastor, Reverend Gary Vandermeer back. He's going to be preaching on Sunday, and we get to have a little reception for him afterwards. So you definitely want to check Sunday out and to see our good friend Gary back among us. My friends, again, I hope you find this time of prayer meaningful, and I invite you, wherever you are, to find a place that's comfortable, a place where you can spend some time in silence, and just to allow the words of Scripture to come over you, to be able to hear the glorious music surround you. And let us now begin with our opening prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. 
Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that a flood of waters may cover you? Can you send forth lightnings so that they may go and say to you, here we are. Who has put wisdom in the inward parts or given understanding to the mind? Who has the wisdom to number the clouds? Or who can tilt the water skins of the heavens when the dust runs into a mass and the clods cling together? Can you hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in their covert? Who provides for the raven its prey when its young ones cry to God and wander about for lack of food? The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand, or at my left hand is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as the rulers lord over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be the first among you must be a slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A number of years ago, I was a high school teacher, and I was teaching at a wonderful school in the United States, and it was roughly about this time of the year when I found there was a period of time where it just didn't seem like the students were responding to what I was doing. And I started to question whether or not I made the right choice in becoming a teacher. And one day, after several days of really wrestling with this sense of maybe I'm not doing the right thing, I decided to go for a jog. And I went out on a perfect autumn day, I went for a run, and the whole time I kept saying, God, God, why? Why are things not working out? Maybe I messed up, maybe I you know, made a mistake. I, I was just wrestling with all these questions and really doubting myself, really feeling quite dreadful. So I made my run, finally came back to my place, and I decided, rarely do I ever do this, but I decided, you know, what the heck, I'm going to open up my Bible, and maybe something will come to me that will speak to my experience. Well, sure enough, I get home, I sit down, open up my Bible, and lo and behold, it opens up to the book of Job, the text that we're reading this Sunday and the past two Sundays. And the text that it opens to is the passage that we hear proclaimed this weekend. And the first words that I read were, Where were you when I created the world? Needless to say, I went quiet because I realized all my questions, all that wrestling that I had, it's actually quite foolish. I was working so hard to control things, to get things to work out the way I wanted, that I wasn't really attentive to what God wanted. I wasn't paying attention to God's ways in the world. Now, the story that we hear from Job today, is, it's an interesting one, because as you might recall, I talked about this a couple weeks ago, Job loses everything. He loses his family, he loses his lifestyle, living, um, his farm, everything. He loses it all. He finds himself on top of a garbage heap, and he 
can't figure out why things are so bad. His friends are telling me he must have made a mistake. Everybody's attacking him, and the poor guy is just at his wit's end. When finally he screams out to God, why? Why are things like this? And God responds, where were you when I created the world? Now, I don't know about you, but I don't find that a terribly helpful response. To be quite honest, it's rather annoying. It's almost as if God is completely insensitive to Job's plight. But I wonder if there isn't something more to it. We often think of Job as the one who's suffering, as the one who is in this dreadful state. But maybe there's something going on in Job. Maybe Job had gone so focused on himself that he wasn't able to see others. And maybe the whole experience that he went through was to strip away from him all that blinded him from seeing the world around. Now, sure, yes, the text says Job was a righteous man. But I think even for persons who are righteous, even when we may think we're doing really well in this world, we can often become ignorant or blind to those around us. And maybe not only blind to those around us, but maybe even blind to the way of God in this world. Sometimes I think we get so focused into our problems, or I do at least, that we can't see a much bigger picture. Thus God responds to Job, where were you when I created the world? Now the part that we don't really hear in our lessons, unfortunately, is that Job eventually, does, or God does eventually acknowledge what Job is going through. And God rightfully condemns his friends for telling Job that he must have done something wrong. But I think it's helpful to stick with this point of do we get so caught in ourselves that we can't see the bigger picture? Do we get so caught into our problems, so caught into our day-to-day -day lives that we can't see beyond ourselves? And I think when we do get so focused on ourselves, it becomes much more difficult to pay attention to those who are suffering, to the marginalized, to the oppressed, that maybe this text is forcing us to not be so self-centered, but to be more open, open not only to God, but open to the world around us. Amen.
in thanksgiving for our church community, for the gifts of health and life as we worship together once again, for the ending of our isolation and the renewal of our bonds to each other and to our neighbors. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for all those who continue to ensure our health and safety, for the just sharing of vaccines throughout the world, and for the healing of our wounds and divisions concerning the pandemic, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the reconciliation of Canadians and First Nations peoples, for the grace of repentance and conversion, for open hearts that share the burden of suffering and abide in the hope of renewal, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those in need of shelter, for refugees, for those ill in mind or body, for those who suffer from racism and all forms of discrimination, for every wounded part of Christ's mystical body, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the work of farmers in Canada and worldwide who produce an abundance of food in the hope that food may be fairly distributed throughout the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the gift of creation, let us pray for all God's creatures, especially migrating birds and mammals preparing for winter hibernation. With gratitude, let us celebrate and share the beauty of our land and of all who dwell within it. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
My name is Brian Gibson. I am a member of our ministry advisory committee. The MAC met last Wednesday night. I would like to tell you the highlights of that meeting. Father Don reported that the church has been open for walk-in visitors between 10 and three on Thursdays. This has been a great success. On September 30th, 25 neighbors dropped in. Many asked questions and had a chat with Father Don. Many things may be different in the post COVID world. We need to assess what ministries we have and what may be missing. Father Don is working on a list of our current ministries and volunteers. Who is doing what? The Diocesan Synod is November 25th to 27th this year. Father Don plans to provide an orientation about the Synod after a Eucharist in early November. Father Gary Vandermeer be, will be with us this Sunday, October 17th. We will have the opportunity to thank him and say farewell that was not possible last January because of COVID. There will be Portuguese pastries and coffee donated by the community after the Eucharist. A hike is being planned for Saturday, October 23rd. The details and destination have not yet been finalized. Father Don's installation as our pastor by the Bishop of Toronto will be Sunday, October 24th at 4 p.m. We are all invited. Saturday, October 30th will be a very busy day for the parish. Dave Roeder is looking for volunteers to help with raking leaves from the lawn of the church as a team building event. The raking will start at 1.30 p.m. At 3 p.m., there will be a tobacco burning ceremony by our indigenous community. Those who raise tobacco plants should bring them to the ceremony. We are invited. That evening at 7 p.m., our Harvest Festival Lessons and Carols will go live on YouTube. We will have a watch party. These Lessons and Carols will support the music program at St. Anne's and support the Oasis Dufferin Food Bank. Donations can be made online. Non-perishable food and hygiene items can be brought to the church. There will be a Christmas musical event to celebrate the season and to support our community partners. Currently, let me rerun that paragraph. There will be a Christmas musical event to celebrate the season and to support our community partners. Currently, it is being discussed whether it will be a live event like past cantates or lessons and carols that will go on YouTube like last year. The wardens reported there has been a problem with illegal parking in our parking lot. Parking passes will be available as of October 17th in the church. You should place the pass on the dashboard of your car when you come to church. The St. Anne's Committee for the Sale of the Parish Hall had a regularly scheduled meeting last Wednesday with our consultants. The draft of the request for expression of interest is expected to be ready in November. The draft will be discussed with the parish. Planning for the development of the undercroft of the church is underway. It will take place in three phases. The first phase will be the installation of a new heating system for the church to end our dependence on the boiler in the parish hall. We have the resources to do this because of a generous donation. Frank Cormier reported that the work of the committee to raise resources and plan for our artwork centenary in 2023 is progressing well. Much is happening, so stay tuned. My friends, again, I'm so glad that you were able to join us for prayer and worship. I really do enjoy these times together, and I know everyone who helps put these videos together really enjoys it as well. And I'm just so grateful to our choir members, to our readers, and of course to our, our favorite Thomas who worked so hard in putting these videos together. My friends, I hope you do find them meaningful and helpful to you as you make your journey of faith. 
As I mentioned earlier in the video, we have a lot of exciting things going on. I shared that our previous pastor, uh, Gary Vandermeer, will be back this weekend and will be preaching at the 1030 service. I really do hope you join us for it. And we got a little treat afterwards. Uh, one of our friends down the street at the Brazilian uh, Portuguese bakery is making some delightful treats for all of us to share on Sunday. So do join us and come say hi to Gary. You know, thank him for his many years of ministry. I feel very lucky as a priest, I'll be honest. I feel very lucky as a priest to be able to minister in this church because Gary really did a lot of good here. And I think all of you worked well together. So I feel lucky for that. So do join us Sunday at 1030 um, as we welcome Gary Vandermeer with us. Sunday is going to be a busy day as well because, as many of you know, we have our community dinner at 515 that evening. And as always, we could sure use your help. So please, if you're able to help, uh, email us at admin at saintanne.ca. We could use your help with small things and big things. Whatever you can help out with, we would be ever so grateful. Then if our fun doesn't stop, it continues the following weekend. Uh, the weekend of October 24th is going to be a big weekend for us. In fact, one of the reasons why I'm sitting in these pews is to offer a little reminder. If you can register for our worship, please do. Uh, each week we post a link, uh, a link for you to click on and to register for Sunday worship and other worship experiences as well. And on the 24th, this is going to be really important. We want all of you here. We want to fill this church well, to what we can, which is about 150 people. We would love to have you come down. I would, and I want to personally invite you. Join us on Sunday, October 24th at 4 p.m. as we celebrate new ministry together. That night, Bishop Andrew, the Bishop of Toronto, will be here, and he will install me as pastor of St. Anne's. And we will all renew our commitment to do ministry here in this wonderful community. So my friends, do join us. Uh, the link will be on our website now uh, for registering for October 24th. Uh, the service will both be in person and on, stream, on live stream. So do consider joining us. Right? And if you can come down, please do, because we're going to have a lot of guests here, and it would be great to offer that wonderful St. Anne's welcome. So do join us October 24th at 4 p.m. And that's in addition, that Sunday we'll also have a 1030 service as we typically do uh, each week. Then we have another big event coming up. O October is not a dull month, that's absolutely sure. On October 30th at 7.30 p.m. we are going to have a watch party whereby we will join together to participate in our uh, Give Thanks Harvest Festival Lessons and Carols uh, video. Uh, many people are working on this right now. The choir has been doing a lot of work preparing music for it, and they sound so beautiful, and many readers are helping. This Give Thanks the Harvest Festival of Lessons and Carols is an opportunity for us to acknowledge the many blessings we have received uh, through God's creation. And as I say in that video, it's also a chance for us to remember our own role to share the goodness of God's creation with all. So that's on October 30th, and it'll remain on our, on our YouTube page for a while. So don't worry if you can't join us on the 30th. You can certainly watch the video anytime after that point. So uh, do, do join us for that. My friends, there are a lot of things going on here at St. Anne's, and I really do invite you to visit our website often at www.stanne.ca. Check it out often. Uh, we do post stuff on there, keep things updated. Also, visit our Facebook page, check that out. And if, you're, if you like, you can sign up for our email. Uh, we send out an email typically twice a week, and most times on Tuesdays with a heads up with upcoming events and registration link for worship. And then on Fridays, we give further details about worship and other events. So if you're interested in that, in getting that email, drop a note to us at admin at saintanne.ca. My friends know as well that I'm here for you, that I'm praying for you, 
and that if there's anything you need, you can always reach out to me. You are important to us at St. Anne's, and we're incredibly grateful for you. My friends, I wish you a lovely weekend, and again, join us on Sunday at 9 o'clock for our Zoom prayer and worship, and at 10.30 for our celebration of Eucharist. You can join here in the church or online, and you can also join us during the week. Uh, we will have worship on Thursday evenings at uh, 5.30, Thursday mornings at 9.30, and the church is open all day Thursday, so do come by. It's really great to be in this awesome space and to pray together. Again, my friends, may God bless you, may God keep you, and may God let God's face shine upon you always. Take care.